I would find myself in very dreary circumstances. Seems my place of work had been replicated on the real side, and there was I, executing my duties. A few variations to my physical life-level version of it, the layout, the colleagues that were there. Also, I was working on the day shift, whereas normally I am a night worker. Anyway, in the midst of all this thrillingness, suddenly there was a meeting that was called. We were all to attend. Initially, I couldn't be bothered and continued with my work, but then someone was deployed to fetch me. Seems it was important that I attend this meeting, and the reason became clear. The meeting was all about myself. Apparently, some nonsensical business about my not sorting out my taxis correctly had caused the entire chain of supermarkets to grind to a halt. I wasn't entirely sure how this could be so, and made my opinions on this absurdity known, but they persisted, and my inaction in this regard had adversely affected the wages of everyone throughout the stores. Naturally now, I was amongst rather a hostile crowd. At first I considered doing something funny. I entertained the notion of transforming into some monster or other and give them a fright. Maybe something big and hairy with lots of teeth. <laughs> I dismissed this idea and instead scrawled out my notice on the back of a shopping bag, along the lines of, this is my leaving note, I'm leaving, and added a few insults that incorporated all of the angry individuals in my vicinity. Seems this wasn't enough. They wanted to go so far as to slay me. Naturally, I wasn't going to linger and be strung up or crucified or something. Thus, it was time to beat a retreat. I fled from my would-be executors and felt it prudent to head upward. It seemed that this version of my supermarket was multi-layered. I bolted upwards ever ascending. The levels to this place seemed incalculable. My pursuers relentless and never far behind. I had an inkling to reach the top of this enormous building and launch myself from it. This wasn't a suicide bid. It was more that I had the impression this was what I must do to escape the clutches of my work colleagues. However, I would never determine if this would have been so. I was captured on one level of the building beneath my objective. I tried another transformational trick. I didn't become a monster. I changed into a female. My intention was to confuse, and perhaps that I was female, it would be harder for them to carry out their execution. I was trusting that the creative consciousness of humanity in regards to females being the fairer gender and far harder to exact harm unto, was present. Perhaps a little naive in this respect, on hindsight, and this proved to be so, as they still intended to do me harm. I switched then to an exterior viewpoint, 
I was outside of the vehicle, and regarding the scene, I began to manipulate the situation from this perspective. Surprised were the attackers, as they found themselves hurled through the air, some blasted by magic blue fire, others made to levitate and remain thrashing in the air. But they were very focused on my demise, and despite my efforts and magical interventions, they succeeded in dispatching my vehicle. The scene faded, and I was once again in a similar place of dreariness, exemplified by a job along the same lines, and back again on the bottom level amongst the same individuals. They were the same, but in different body vehicles, as was I. They had no memory of what had transpired moments ago, but I had full recall. Then I awoke. So, I would suggest that this building was the physical level, and my place of work representing the boring nature of this life level. Interesting how, in this experience, I worked by day instead of night, perhaps then suggesting the real light of the true reality encouraging me on, shining in my being as I recognise more and more of it. Suggesting then, as the process of awareness unfolds, as I become more with the is, I would go about my business of earning more and more my awareness through sharings with others. Once again, this is met with hostility, generally, as most of creation do not want to wake up, and those that do present and share the is are regarded with suspicion and disdain, as they upset the delicate little created fantasy one-dimensional lives that most people have agreed and decided upon. Agitating them, or perhaps stimulating their own real selves, which in turn causes aggravation and a cognitive dissonance for their personal selves. And often then, this is directed upon those that are the source of their unsettlement. And so, in this dream, they conjure up some nonsense, some justification for my execution. And how many times... Do we see examples of this in creation? The whistleblowers and the aware being persecuted and imprisoned or eliminated for ridiculous unfounded reasons. Initially, I was going to become a monster in this confrontation, perhaps getting a sense of where this was going the real self handling the situation by any means necessary. But then, as we interject ourselves into the battle, we are rather agreeing to the idea that the created situation represents, a little like my robot dream, where the rebel robots were fighting the damaged robots, how everything has been geared toward battle, getting people embroiled in the fight, creating wars and conflicts for this very reason, to present distraction and a misdirection of focus from the all is. And so, individuals along their process of awareness become involved in created situations of this nature, 
they may pick the righteous side of good and battle evil, and yet, despite this supposed noble stance, they step out of the nowness of the is and become the effects of the ideas they have agreed to and are now tap-lined by. And so I didn't engage them and bite their heads off and all that. I fled instead. The building was very large and multi-layered, I suggest. This represented the collective consciousness of humanity and how the programming of them reached throughout all the levels of the psych realms, from the physical to the ethereal, which indeed it does. Nowhere then is safe in creation. Maybe some areas better than others, but nevertheless, here came my programmed assassins, the unaware masses, chasing me across creation. And we see how even with being aware or being on the process of becoming so, creation is not safe. Maybe safer to a degree with awareness, but no guarantees, as here I was captured. I stepped completely into my awareness now, my real self, that which oversees my body vehicles, and as my female transformation failed to have the effect I was seeking, I took other measures. Creational manipulational defences were initiated, and yet, even despite this, my body vehicle was destroyed. This may not have mattered, as if I was aware enough, and my vehicle taken out, assuming I had the recognition, I'd simply gallivant off to maybe the real universes. Alas, it seems, I didn't go where I expected. I found myself back in creation, and the physical level at that, in a new life, and in more mundane boringness. It's possible then that I was doing fine up until the last scene. I didn't engage, get involved in battle, and lose my focus, and perhaps had I continued in this vein and simply allowed my demise, then I would have maybe not returned to creation. But evidently, I utilised the psychic sciences, magic and such, to a degree that I stepped out of the nowness, outside of my real self, and into my personal self, even though I had the objective view. And to be back with my personal self would have me back in creation, and the cause and effect laws apply. The effect being further lifetimes, as the result of my magical dabblings, although the use of them was not frivolous, seems there is a rather fine line, and easy to step over it, into the personal self and creation. Although I did retain a full memory of what had occurred, and so was in a position where I would re-establish my connection to the is, and proceed from where I left off, as I had full recall, and perhaps then would deal with the situation differently if similar were to occur again. It's a view and an experience, but in theory, if I have the awareness and am standing real, I am the decider, and anything I do in creation along the lines demonstrated in this dream is just experience, 
and if my real intent is maintained and my focus fixed on the ears, cause and effect shouldn't apply. Suggests then I'm not quite there yet, and so I will still fall prey to cause and effect should situations as this come into my experience, or it's simply another example of falling to the side due to getting embroiled in the fight, forfeiting the opportunity to be with the ears, although this was a direct attack and not something I chose to become a part of. Or perhaps a reminder, an over-exaggerated dream to instill the demonstration to not get involved in any confrontation on the physical level, as we all will get confrontation as we continue to share what we do, and if we engage emotionally, we step out of the nowness of the is and are momentarily back in cause and effect creation, therefore, and have to realign ourselves resultingly. And if this becomes frequent, we can spiral off into the personal self with all its ideas and emotional outpourings, and may get lost again in our created selves. We become engaged in this kind of interaction and lose our focus with the inevitable cause and effect and tapline consequences. Yes, as you become more aware, you still have to deal with cause and effect creation, which is fine. Now, this is where you, uh, yes, the confrontation, yes, to present this to the world. Yes, it's a risk taker position. But at the same time, this is how you become more aware. It's not a passive, uh, it's not being passive to where you kind of go hide out and it's all about you. See, again, that's the personal self. And this is where these passive paths, uh, you might say they have failed. They work for a while. You know, we all went through the babysitters, but uh, it's a new day. It's a new time. And those old things don't work. So, you know, people try to bring in the love idea and peace on earth and all these things. Well, that's cute. But realistically, uh, deal with things as they really are, not just thinking that these things are going to just take care of everything because we'll just spread the love and spread the peace and, oh, I love everything, etc. No, uh, creation is still cause and effect. You're still the effect of it. And if you don't become more aware and pay attention to the true reality, yeah, because again, love is, and that's usually the personal love idea and the personal things that we go through. So, yeah, so again, uh, confronting these things, you become more adept, don't you? Just like the adventures of James Bond and all the things that he goes through, from the adventure to the romance to getting the mission done, etc. So, uh, this is what this is this is what's so cool about now and what I've been through too and that is that yes I've been through these things and I still with, deal with cause and effect all the time that's just how it is but uh, I step up and I, I step into it I completely step into it uh, to do what we're doing because there's a bigger picture here and that is the demise of the world uh, overall so uh, again, getting past that personal self where it's just about you, the, the me, me, me thing to where you want to like save yourself or what have you. So in these situations, yes, you learn. But as we're doing the bigger picture here with what's going on in the planet and the solar system and the galaxy, because we got black holes here and it's sucking it all up. So uh, yes, but in the meantime, you're going through these experiences and learning so it's not just, uh, you know, popping into the real universes. It's actually uh, a purpose and a real purpose while we're here to provide something real. This is where we really become more aware right here through whatever is going on right now and facing the challenge. So, 
you're doing that. You stepped up, and that's why you're bothered by others, even old friends or whatever, sometimes family, but you're lucky. Your family has an understanding, uh, which most don't. Uh, mine have displaced themselves because, again, they want nothing to do with me. Uh, they like their personal self, but they don't see where they're at uh, and the world is. But you do, so it's so cool. Yes, uh, you have to write all these things down. And but you're doing the uh, the videos and uh, stuff like that, which is great. Sharing this for the world, you're stepping up, and that's why you get the confrontations. So uh, a lot of people are thinking that, well, gee, I don't want to be tap lined. I don't want to be hassled. I don't want to be chased. I don't want the reptilians coming after me. Well, guess what? The whole place is full of them. Uh, you're gonna have to face it uh, because running from them. It's not going to do it. There's no place to hide. And the boys can't back you unless you step up and have the courage to do something real. Then they can back you. That becomes your automatic protection. And then they start taking care of the tap lines and that. But if you go hide away and uh, just it's all about you and you just don't want to be bothered, well, then you just gather dust. And so they can't do anything because you haven't stepped up. This is the time. This is why, you know, just like Pierce's experiences, sees what I'm doing on the real side, there's a much bigger picture going on here. This is the big surprise, much, much bigger, because this planet, this solar system is in huge jeopardy, and most people don't see it while they're walking around doing their little personal lives and doing the business world, etc. Again, 100% human farming here. There is no la-la land. It's 100% human farming so you better figure it out right now or again just like your experience you go into future lifetimes of even worse situations that are even more boring yeah so thank you so much for that kevin great go ahead okay thank you Dwayne.